Chifu, your life story is so interesting. Where did it begin? <laughs> well, we could go long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, does seem like quite a ways now, almost 70 years ago. Um, but anyway, yeah, I started, uh, I was born in California, Los Angeles area, actually by the LAX airport. Wait, Hermosa Beach? Well, no, I moved there later on. I was actually oh. born in Westchester oh. by the airport. And uh, that's my dad was just starting his insurance business. And um, uh, I wasn't a big kid growing up. Uh, in school, in elementary school, so I was kind of picked on a bit. You know, I was very studious, uh, played drums, you know, I did music, I did, I was always involved in different things, mm -hmm. you know, above the, uh, the the norm, so to speak, you know, but that to me was normal. But anyway, um, I guess my first encounter after getting tired of getting beat up, you know, on a monthly or weekly couple of whatever you know basis monthly um, or weekly oh it happened quite a bit you know really? we had i grew up I, I had a wonderful neighborhood uh -huh. and a lot of, it's so funny you know because kids back then they beat you up then they were a friend the next week and then they were mad uh -huh. at you again and you know it's just weird but it was it was it wasn't all bad but i didn't have a lot of skills mm. you know my dad worked a lot he was a ex-bomber pilot in world war ii wow. and uh, but he still didn't have enough much time to teach me mm -hmm. a lot of pugilistic boxing, you know, uh, things. So um, one day, my mom, uh, she belonged to the YMCA, and this is before the day of where there's gyms everywhere or martial arts on every, schools on every corner type of thing. And so she went to the Y because she loved to swim and exercise and play volleyball. She had a uh -huh. bunch of friends she played volleyball with. So one day I went with her. I was about nine, ten years old at that time. And uh, as she was playing, I kind of wandered around the Y, just looking at other areas I had not ventured to before, you uh -huh. know, because I used to just go swim most of the time when she played volleyball or stuff. And uh, I remember walking down this one hallway that I didn't know where that led to, and uh, I saw these two big doors, you know. And as I'm walking towards it, I'm hearing, <laughs> you know, like, sounds like that. and then, Quiet for a second, and you're, you know, all these noises and <laughs> flapping and pounding, and uh -huh. like, what the heck is this, you know? So I walked down to the doors, and I kind of like peeked into the door, and I see this completely matted room, right? You know, and there's these two guys standing on the floor, on this mat, and they had these pajamas on as I'm wearing my <laughs> robes, <laughs> you know, pajamas on, or which we now know is a martial art uniform. And um, they were like, they bow to the other guy. And then the other guy would move and do a thing, like grab was like a punch him. And he just, whoosh, just flipped this guy over his shoulder. Bam! Now I'm here with this pop, pop, bang, bang. Was, you know? So I went in. There was this like, little seating area. And I went in there and sat for a while. And I just watched and observed. And I thought, oh, my God. This and is you've so never seen anything like no, this before, I mean, not on well, TV? No, you know, or... you've seen some of the... Yeah black and white fight sometimes you uh -huh. know even um who was it edward g robinson or um jim uh jimmy C uh, cagney mm. he he did some judo he, he studied judo mm. and there was a gangster movie or a detective movie he did or something and actually he did some so that was like probably my own Interesting. reflection of that you know until later on we got the junior high and you know, Green Hornet and Batman and all that stuff yeah. started coming out. Then there was more martial right. arts, of course. But you're 10 years old. But I'm 10, I'm like, life. wow, you know, yeah. yeah. And I'm just going, what is going on? So I sat and I just observed, you know, because I know mom's going to play for at least an hour. Uh -huh. You know, so I'm watching these guys going. And I come to find out they were the instructor and the assistant instructor. Mm. They do their thing during the day because classes normally started in the afternoon when people came home from mm -hmm. school or, or whatnot or on weekends. So um, the first gentleman walked over to me after they were done, and they bowed you. I was just so, I couldn't believe they were so respectful to each other after they just knocked the snot out of each other. You know, I was like, oh, thank you very much, you know, type of thing. You know, I just know that that's all part of the respect uh -huh. thing. It was, it was, uh, but I'd never observed that before. And uh, so uh, he came over and walked over. He goes, well, hey, young man. He goes, my name is Sensei Todd. How are you? And I shook his hand, and then he goes, is this interesting to you and I said yeah <laughs> you know, I said I you never I, at that point you didn't hesitate no you just, I was yeah. like well, the door open you know yeah. I was like wow this is this is gonna teach me something and he goes so he's looking at my stature you know and he goes 
have a little problem at school? <laughs> you know, he knows. You yes. know, I mean, that's a good teacher. You know, it's like not like I want to get back to kick some butt. You know, at school, I just wanted to. I, and my answer was exactly. I said, "Yes, sir." I said, "I, I have trouble sometimes because I'm not a very tall mm -hmm. kid." You know, and I said, "And uh, I just want to know how to defend myself so I can stop them mm -hmm. at least." You know, and he goes, "Great answer." You know. And I said, because I really don't want to hurt anybody. I was never a, a type of individual that really wanted to hurt people. Uh -huh. You know, I was very spiritual as a kid, and as I got older, I got even stronger. But uh, that desire, even, it's why ironic, uh, even to kind of backtrack a little bit, I always had this thing, even though I'm Scandinavian and from Viking heritage, you uh -huh. know, um, it's I always had this draw towards things of the East. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, even back in the day when we would go to the little... Chinese takeout place that my dad would take us uh -huh. to from time to time, you know, it had the pagodas and the dragons and all that stuff. You were transported to China. I, yeah, you know, I mean, just going into the little Chinese room, I just, still, it was new to me. It was a, it was a land I'd never seen or been, mm -hmm. but what was that, why was that attractive to me, mm -hmm. you know? Anyway, so, uh, so that, of course, martial arts I knew after talking to them, yes, it did come from the East and it did come from China and it did come from Japan and, you know, all that. And then so he goes, well, is it, does it seem like something you would like to try and want to do? And, and I said, yes, sir, I, 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 I really would. And he goes, well, are your parents here? And I said, well, yeah, my mom's playing volleyball right now in the gym. And he goes, well, why don't we just take a walk a little bit? So we ended up walking around. You know, my mom had just was almost done. They were just finishing. So we, he, Sensei Todd's a good guy. He's a very, very honorable man. And he waited until my mother was done. You know, and she sees me standing with him, kind of looking like, oh, what, uh -oh. what is he wearing? What this, has he done? This <laughs> uniform with a belt on around his waist, and my son's in trouble. Yeah, you know. So, um, so she came up, we introduced, and all of that, and she goes, "Well, Mrs. Erickson, I think your your son Jerry, you know, has a uh, a desire to want to learn how to defend himself. Mm -hmm. We teach judo and karate. It's a combination." Because back then, you know, there were no big names of styles, right. you know, so it was like, oh, you know, this, that's the only thing that people could really identify with. There was, were no Kung Fu was, schools, there well, were no... Well, there were, but there were more Chinese run, and back in Chinatown oh, okay. and different places, they were more like all over the place like yeah. that. But people could identify with judo and karate because mm -hmm. they knew guys coming back from the war in Korea or, or whatever, yeah. and, you know, been and spent time in Japan, and that they picked it up while they were there, so that's all they called it. Hmm. So uh, he explained everything to her, and I had told her that, you know, I got beat up once in a while, uh -huh. bullied, I should say, you know, instead of just beat up everything, but bullied, and uh, that I wanted to learn how to defend myself, yeah. and then my mom said, well, you know what, that, that might be a good thing, you know, so uh, I studied with them, and uh, that was a, a really great experience for me. Uh, he was incredible at technical knowledge, because mm -hmm. he spent some time in Japan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so it's a great thing your parents were open to that. Well, they were. Because you mine know, were not. Yeah. yeah you know, mom and dad were always very, you know, what makes you happy? Mm -hmm. What is it you What is it you want, you desire? Like when I learned drums, I really wanted to learn mm -hmm. an instrument, you know, because then the Beatles came out in 63, you know, and then I wanted to play, you know. But I had started drums before that, but I got more influenced into rock and roll and all that later on. But uh, so I was kind of artistic, I guess, in a way, because... My brother and I did dance, uh, uh, kind of folk dancing and all mm -hmm. that type of stuff. And that's how we got to the why, because it was across from the area that we used to go to our dance class. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, then I ventured over to the why, and then I kind of distanced myself then from dance. My brother continued, but I went and did the judo and karate mm -hmm. at the YMCA. I found that was a little bit more me and kept up with my drumming. So you did so, that three times a week or... Yeah, we it was two nights during the week and then Saturdays, so I three days a week. So was that primarily your at that time that was your sport? That's what you were just involved in. Yeah, besides yeah. stuff at in you know, you know elementary school and right. then junior right. high, you know. Um, so, but yeah, so I studied with them about until I was almost thirteen. So I guess a couple of years, you know, I got up to like between a blue and a green belt mm -hmm. at that time. So I took it pretty seriously and I really enjoyed it. Um, then I found out later on, my dad had the possibility of getting moved up with the business he was in mm -hmm. and we might have to relocate. Mm. So um, 
you know, but we had to wait and see what was happening with that. And I was really nervous about that because I didn't know if there was another place where I'd be moving to yeah. if, if I was going to move would train? where would I go, you right. know? So, um, so these guys really had a big influence on you. Yeah. Master Todd, very much so. Well, the Sensei Todd, I should say. Uh -huh. Um, I, I don't even know if he's alive now, right. you know, but, um, just very precise, mm -hmm. really knew how to talk to you, be it a child, an adult. He was a very, I think, never knowing at that time I'd end up not just being a martial art instructor, mm -hmm. but an ordained Shaolin disciple, you know, from the Shaolin Temple, which is something, you know, that later on came to me as what a, a, a desire that I, want, mm -hmm. I truly wanted. Um, but, you know, you look at it, you never, you never know where that path is gonna go, but mm -hmm. that was the beginning of that path nice and it just kept moving on and moving on as we keep moving on with our film you know we'll be getting into deeper facets yeah. of that uh, very interesting each, each part of this journey of a land far away